Hello, and welcome to the winter edition of VSU Magazine. I'm Kelly Gordon. On today's show, Dave Holland will take us on an interview with Valdosta legend and TV actor Sonny Schroyer. Jason Bryan will take us on a VSU varsity cheerleading practice. Jeff Evans will update us on the wide world of Blazer sports. And Scott Reagan will take us on a tour of WVVS. First, let's take a look at one of Valdosta's legends. This actor has had roles in many aspects of television with his most recent role in the primetime drama, I'll Fly Away. But most of us know him for his lovable character, Enos, in the 70s action comedy show, Dukes of Hazard. Sonny Schroyer has proven to be an excellent on-screen personality, and Dave Holland will give us a closer look with this accomplished actor. He's best known for his role as the honest and lovable deputy on the TV series Dukes of Hazard. What many people don't know is that Sonny Schroyer had been in 13 major motion pictures before Dukes of Hazard went on the air in 1977. Since that time, the 58-year-old actor has been busy doing public appearances, TV interviews, and has performed in a variety of TV shows and commercials. We caught up with Sonny at his lakeside home in Valdosta to reminisce about the past and catch up with his very active career. How much of Enos is Sonny Schroyer? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> I think you know uh, I think a lot of Venus was Sonny Schroyer uh, as to what percentage <laughs> I don't know I, all I know is when I climb on the roof of this house and I have, have to keep saying you're not on camera you're not on camera don't fall off and I find myself doing that quite often because in the Dukes of Hazard, I had such a small part to begin with that I uh, that I could had time to think up crazy things to do, you know. Now there's no, no Sonny Schroyer and Enos are quite a bit alike. Uh, Enos was uh, he he was kind of a shy guy, and uh, I'm deep down I'm rather shy, and. Uh, Kind of klutzy, but I, I try real hard, and sometimes when I try real hard, it's to my detriment. You can try real hard, you can try too hard in life, you know. It's been Sonny's continual efforts, though, that have made him successful in every role he's taken. Sonny admits that the most challenging character that he's played has been that of Bobby Slocum on the TV series I'll Fly Away, currently seen on PBS. I've just been sitting here thinking, what a bum you are. Right. You talked to Mr. Joyce's foreman yet? No. No? I mean, not yet. You a bright boy. See, it's cause he's such a bright boy, Nathan. He don't need to work, right? Forget him. I don't know, sir. You don't know? You don't know his best friend, and you don't know how stupid bright boy is? You're so stupid. You always have been, you always will be. It was, uh, you know, it was a, a bigoted uh, father that was uh, had his values all messed up. He had a son that he beat, and he beat his wife, and uh, he was hated himself, and he hated others, and he, he spewed out hate, and that was that was very difficult for me to do because I'm just just the opposite. Sonny was born and raised in Valdosta, and no matter where his career may take him, home is certainly where his heart is. <laughs> he hustles my hometown of Valdosta, Georgia. Population forty thousand one hundred and eighty-two. Three. <laughs> Four. <laughs> For an actor who has accomplished so much during his career, one can't help but ask, what else would this deputy like to try his hand at before he hangs up his hat? <laughs> Don't laugh. I, I would like, I really would like to uh, do Shakespeare. Just a little part to start with, and, and uh, I'd, I'd love to do that. I think that was, he was a cool guy. <laughs> Dave Holland, VSU-TV News, Valdosta. And we'll be right back. Stay tuned for more VSU Magazine.
children are the largest group of Americans living below the poverty line. They have to reach higher for what others take for granted. Health care, balanced meals, encouragement to learn. But with help early on, children in your community can gain the skills to get out from below the poverty line. It takes programs like Success by Six and people like you to help them take the first step. Call to learn more. Change the world of a child and you change the world. Vince, that new dummy cam is great. Yeah, it'll sure give people a whole new outlook on what it's like when you don't wear a safety belt. I think they'll get the picture. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. Hi, and welcome back to VSU Magazine. We'll now take a look at what it takes to be part of Valdosta State University's varsity cheerleading squad. Jason Bryan will, will take us on a varsity cheerleading practice for a closer look at the emotional and physical aspects of this accomplished squad. <laughs> You've seen them cheer during the football season, and they just got through with their basketball season. I'm sitting here with the Valdosta State University varsity cheerleading squad with Coach Kristen Wrinkler and Crystal, Patty, Trisha, Brooke, John, Joe, Mike, and Mark. Hey guys, how y'all doing? Pretty good. Fine. Okay, the first question is, once you're chosen as a cheerleader, what do you go through between the time you're chosen and the time you begin cheering for football season? The first thing would be, um, you prepare during the summer with aerobic workouts and just running, getting in shape and everything and stuff like that. And we also, we come to school early and practice as a squad together. And during the summer, we'll be going to camps and working together also during the summer. Okay. Uh, when you get back to school and, and you begin preparing for football season, uh, how much practice during a week do you go through? Um, right now, we practice two nights a week for two hours and we practice on Sundays for two hours too. Okay. What preparation outside of practice do you do? Um, we work out at least for four hours for a week and we just run and walk and do aerobics. Okay. Um, any of you guys hold jobs or, um, or take uh, overload or anything? Uh, it's, uh, I have a job. And I, a lot of us do have jobs on the squad and we just work. You work your job schedule around cheerleading. There's a lot of time involved with cheerleading, and then you also on top have games, especially during basketball season, you have a lot many more games than you do football season. Um, how do you balance going to school, having a job, and cheering at the same time? You do <laughs> no, uh, I'm taking 20 hours. It's, it's just it's time management. Um, you've got to budget your time and allow for cheerleading practice and make sure that everything you do comes out right on. You know, you got to keep your grades up. That's the number one thing. So it's basically just time management. Okay. Now, between the girls and the guys, who has the hardest job? The guys. The guys. The guys. The girls have a hard job, too, because we're the ones getting dropped all the time. <laughs> well, not all the time, but. So, guys, if you're the hard, what makes it so hard for being a guy cheerleader? Well, it takes, it takes a lot of uh, strength, coordination, and uh, te techniques, which you got to, throughout the year, you, gotta, you keep brushing them up to get them perfect, but you never can. So it's just constantly trying and trying again. How, do y'all practice more than the girls do? I mean, uh, outside training, you know, out, train more than the girls we do. All, we all work out, but um, I guess I guess the guys' workout would be a little bit more intense than the girls because we all. I mean, theirs is mostly gymnastic work, aerobic work. When we do mostly muscular work, you know, having to pick them up and stuff like that. Plus, the mental work of having to deal with attitudes and stuff like that. But other than that, it's a. Uh, yeah, I think we do have a tougher job. So to get more in depth with the Valdosta State University cheerleading, y'all are like a family, and so toes do get stepped on, huh? Uh, how, so what is it like being working together all the time? And uh, Y'all almost two quarters, y'all work together, right? Um, we all love each other very much. Of course, in any group or club you're going to have, you're all going to have disagreements, but we always, work, always seem to work them out one way or the other, and we always end up loving each other in the end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, during the year, um, during the summer, while everyone's away from school, y'all go through camp and training. Is that correct? Well, this year, <laughs> this year, last year they didn't go to camp, but this year um, we're working towards at least going to a camp for about a week long UCA camp, and hopefully we'll get that worked in. So we'll see what we can come up with. 
and how how long does that count? Oh, uh, it's a week long. Mm -hmm. What go, goes on through that camp? Um, you learn technique, different cheers, um, the latest techniques in stunning and spotting, and uh, basically coming together and working as a squad because it'll be after tryouts with the new squads established, and it'll be new people on the squads, and um, you just kind of have to build that unity, and that's the one thing in cheerleading that um, a lot of people don't realize. You, there's a lot of trust that has to be built between your partners and each other because people can get hurt, and I mean, it's a reality and you have to face it and if you don't trust each other and you don't have that built that built-in trust amongst each other things aren't going to happen who's been here the longest out of all of you guys crystal and so how, how long so you've been here for how, how many years this is my third year on the squad and how many years were you without a coach just two years and this is your first year without a coach first year kristen has been a uh, been a coach we haven't had a coach before her we've had a sponsor but not somebody to get out here and tell us what to do what we're doing wrong how to do different things so it's nice having a coach all right kristen so y'all see so <laughs> go kristen uh, <laughs> so, so uh, do y'all seem that um that do you think your quality has improved ever since Kristen's got here? Definitely, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Great deal. Uh, what what's the difference between last year and this year? Um, as a whole, our squad gets along better. I think when Kristen came along, she brought a lot of unity and a lot of um, leadership. Before we were on our own, we were just doing what we thought we knew was right and not what was right. And she taught us right techniques and right skills, and we're a lot better and a lot thankful. Well, Kristen, where did you get your training from? Um, I cheered at the University of Illinois for the Fighting Illini, so um, back, well, over there it's a bigger program, uh, much more competitive, we competed nationally, and that's about where I learned everything. After all these guys have graduated and gone, what are you, what, what's, what's your hopes for the cheerleading squad, um, projecting about five years down the road? Um, well, unfortunately, five years down the road, I probably, well, I probably won't be here. Um, my husband's in the Air Force, so uh, <laughs> we'll be gone. But I hope that whatever I've established here can continue on and the program will stay on its feet. So, <laughs> and just grow. I heard someone say SeaWorld. Yeah. Uh, well, that's no. where, that's Competition where, for that's nationals. nationals. Competition for nationals, yeah. We'll all be here still cheering for five years. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, we'd all love to get the there. Year I mean, as a coach, program. I just love to <laughs> On the eight year graduation program. Well, I thank you guys for joining me this. I know it's cold out here. About time this thing airs it'll be sunny and hot people are like where are they where are they I, I would just like to say something to the uh, the people who are watching the the the, uh, the fans and stuff i don't not meaning to de degrade the vsu cheerleaders vadasa cheerleaders in the past but i just think that the, the crowd has really given us a lot of support uh more i mean i've had people come up to me and say that before like you said yourself your freshman year that they didn't even really wouldn't uh, acknowledge the cheerleading squad because it was just so it was just chaotic you know but now that we've got what with the coach and stuff like that and I just I want to say a thanks to the fans because they really have showed us a lot more support because it, it means a lot when you go out to cheer and you have people paying attention to you rather than people you know looking away and stuff like that but I just want to say something out on campus and stuff like that um, for example I remember I went to history department to a man I've never seen before he says aren't you the cheerleader that always tumblers and I was very proud that really I really felt proud. <laughs> it motivates you when people recognize you like that. <laughs> well, thank you for all joining me. Thank you for joining me today. I'm glad y'all have gotten a lot more respect today. And uh, I look good luck in the future. Good luck in the future because I, the outlook's much more brighter than it was a couple of years ago. Right, right now. Well, I thank you guys for joining me. Right now, we we'll take a little a closer look at the Valdosta State University varsity cheerleading squad.
Don't go away. We'll be back with more VSU Magazine with the Valdosta State University Varsity Cheerleading Squad. Don't go away. Go Blazers! Thanks for staying tuned. Just like the rest of the year, Winter Quarter brings out the Blazer spirit in the Valdosta community and the university. Blazer basketball dominated this quarter's sport action with Blazer baseball and softball promising to keep us cheering into spring quarter. Jeff Evans will now give us an overview of all the Blazer action in sports. Thank you, Kelly. Valdosta State University girls basketball team has come off a disappointing season. Valdosta did start off the season strong. The Lady Blazers were ranked nationally in the first half of the season. The second half of the season was not as kind to the Lady Blazers as they finished the season on a down note. The Blazers were in the hunt to make the conference playoffs at one time. The Blazers' slide was due to injuries, inexperience, and partially to the retirement of Coach Cooper. Coach Cooper has ended his successful tenure of coaching at Valdosta State University. Coach Cooper brought the pro basketball program back to a very competitive and successful program. Coach Cooper will be sorely missed at Valdosta State University. Good luck to Coach Cooper. Look forward to next year as the Blazers will bring back a very experienced and competitive core of talent Blazers, Blazers onto the court. The boys basketball team has always had, has also had a very disappointing season. The Blazers did finish the season on a positive note with a key victory that will be built on for next season. The Blazers had a talented team this season but could not get over the hump. The Blazers were in many close games, but did not learn how to win those close games. The Blazers had one of, if not the youngest teams fielded in the conference. With game experience back next year, Coach Dominey's Blazers will learn how to win. Look for a successful season from the Blazers next year. The Blazers will be a tough team to deal with in the Gulf South Conference. Both girls and boys tennis teams have started out slowly, but that can be due to the fact that they have played many top-ranked teams in Division II tennis. The tennis team has a fairly inexperienced team, but has not been able to put together a total team effort. Look for the Blazers tennis team to finish up with a strong effort. The Valdosta State University Lady Blazers softball team is off to a blazing start. Coach Durani's girls team is ranked nationally and on a mission to get back to the Nationals. With an experienced team back, strong defense, excellent pitching, and a total team effort, the Blazers are playing outstanding softball. The Lady Blazers have several upcoming home games and encourage fans to come out and visit them while they're in action. Coach Durani Blazers have always been and always will be a powerhouse in Division II softball. Valdosta State University Blazers baseball team is off to a slower than expected start, but have played much better lately. Coach Thomas' tenure at Valdosta has been impressive. The Blazers have always fielded a strong team. The Blazers are always a team to reckon with in the Gulf South Conference. This year's team has plenty of talent with several All-Americans. The Blazers' goal is to get a berth in the playoffs and win the Gulf South regular season and postseason championships. The Blazers have many upcoming home games. Encourage you to come out and give them a chance to support them. Come out and watch the Blazers in quest of making the national playoffs and hopefully bringing back a Division II national championship trophy back to Valdosta. As spring arrives, so does spring football as it infiltrates the campus of Valdosta State University. The Blazers are getting in shape for spring practice. Getting the body physically fit is a key to surviving the brutal heat and pressure of spring practice. The Blazers are gearing up for a very promising season. After last year's disappointment of not making the playoffs, the Blazers will not be denied this year. Coach Mummy's football. North Alabama in its way, Valdosta State. State University Blazers know they need to get ready for the challenge. While with leading, with Chris Hatcher leading the way, the Blazers will be ready for all challenges in the fall. With most starters back on offense and all on defense, the Blazers are looking forward to a run at the national championship. Coach Mummy has made Valdosta a definite contender this year. Good luck, Blazers. This is Jeff Evans from VSU Magazine with Blazer Sports. I encourage each and every one of you to come out and support Blazer Athletics. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Stay tuned. 
She is one of America's toughest drug enforcement agents. Last year, she helped convict 90 drug dealers, seized several tons of crack and marijuana, and closed down 10 major drug operations. She is a 68-year-old grandmother named Irma. She set up a community drug watch that is not only changing her neighborhood, but its future. There are many ways to help in your community. Call the Points of Life Foundation. Do something good. Feel something real. He protects all living things in the forest. But he can't do it alone. Please don't play with matches. Put out your campfires. And never, ever forget the words of Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent forest fires. Welcome back to VSU Magazine. Now let's take a look at the inner workings of Valdosta State University's own student-run radio station. Scott Reagan will take us on a tour of WVVS. Hello, my name's Scott Reagan. I'm the music director at WVVS. It's the student radio voice of Valdosta State University. The frequency is 90.9 FM. Today we're going to take you in all three of our rooms. We're going to show you exactly what we do. Actually, a lot of students don't even know that we have a radio station here on campus. So the first room we're going to go into is the studio and the lobby where we're on the air right now. Now here we are in the studio of 90.9. As you can see, it's a little bit after 7 o'clock. Katie is on the air right now playing music and doing air breaks. She has another show on Monday nights. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, it's every Monday nights, and it's on from 10 to midnight. And my, my special show is basically uh, all female bands, female lead singers, uh, female soloists. The focus is the female singer. Mains of Music, what it's called, right? Yeah, Mains of Music. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's not the only special show we have. We have a whole bunch throughout the week. Tuesday nights at 8, we have Planet Hip Hop, which is a four-hour rap show, Urban Contemporary. On Wednesday nights, we have a new music show called The Seven Day Sampler, hosted by Mitch, and that's from 8 to 10. Uh, followed by that show on Wednesday night, it's me at 10 o'clock doing dance and house music. Thursday nights, we have The Zone, which is two hours of loud rock and metal. Friday nights, all requests... Uh, uh, Saturday, a world show, Saturday night, an oldie show. And actually during the day we play a good mix of music, anything from the Cowboy Junkies to Prong, if you're familiar with any of those bands. Most of those fit in the alternative format. Uh, just to be to be up here at the radio station, all you have the only requirement is to be a VSU student. And uh, actually that's what we're here for. We're, we're here to uh, either show VSU students a good time, you know, just hanging out on the radio and playing music that they like, or this station can also function for somebody that wants to uh, actually uh, do something later on after they graduate in radio broadcasting. But uh, speaking of music, we're going to go into the archives of the music library where we have anything from old vinyl dating back to 1971 when the radio station first went on the air to uh, all the new releases. So we'll go over there. Now this room is really the highlight of the tour. This is the music library and what I call the archives. I mean, any piece of music that we've ever gotten since 1971 when the station went on the air is in this library somewhere, not in necessarily alphabetical order. This is the vinyl section. Uh, vinyl records that is and they're pretty much alphabetized all the way down to the floor like if you pull out the C section this is consolidated a San Francisco industrial band uh, a lot of a lot of political statements are made in their music you go all the way down to the T's this is something interesting everyone probably remembers this one especially if you're my age in junior high this came out Twisted Sister we don't play this record a lot but we do have it in case anyone wants to hear it and then if you look over on this side this is really the newest edition, the newest uh, wall to the music library. This is where all our compact discs are, sto are stored and they're in alphabetical order from each cubby hole. This happens to be the I's and the J's. I've got Jane's Addiction, James, Jesus Jones in the I section. I've got Information Society. And actually what you're seeing right here is only a corner of the music library. It wraps all the way around and records are stacked all the way to the ceiling. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about that as we get the whole panoramic view of the music library. This is the vinyl section. Really a lot of the stuff that you're seeing there is stuff that we play every day. 
And then if you look up on the ceiling, you'll see some of the old playlists from the old music directors that have been here, and of course the CD section. I mean, we've probably got over 3,000 CDs just right there on the wall. And then we've got so many 12-inch vinyl records, they stack practically all the way up to the ceiling, and we really don't know what to do with a lot of it, but maybe uh, someday someone will pull one of those out and it might be worth something, you never know. Well, the grand tour of the radio station wraps up right here on my desk. This is the music director's corner in the office. And as you can see, these are the CDs that I've just gotten for this week. So I've got my work cut out for me. Uh, basically, all you have to be is a VSU student to work here at the Student Voice. You have to be currently enrolled. It's very simple. All you have to do is come up, fill out an application. We'll put you on the schedule, and we'll get you on the air. And this has been a grand tour of 90.9, the Student Student Voice, WVVS, Valdosta State University, and for VSU TV, I'm Scott Reagan. Remember how good it felt the first time you gave five? Well, now there's another way to give five. Set a goal to give more. Five hours a week and 5% of your income to the causes you care about. It'll make you feel like a winner every day of your life. So give more. Give five. One eight hundred five five give five. I'm Kelly Gordon, and I hope you've enjoyed this winter edition of VSU Magazine. We'll leave you tonight with scenes from Valdosta State University's Black History Month celebration. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next quarter. Nike.